Okay, we're going to make a um, sun block and a stick. You can call it a sun stick if you want. Um, I'm going to start by zeroing out my scale. Um, make that at zero. Okay, I'm going to put in some beeswax. I prefer using pastille size. These are just the little pellets rather than blocks, but you can also get beeswax in blocks. And this is yellow beeswax, which means it hasn't been bleached. Um, also what I prefer to use because it has that nice light beeswax scent. So we've got the beeswax. Then we're going to go with some shea butter. You could also use cocoa butter, same amount. Um, you could use mango butter. Actually, i got to remember to zero that out again. And I like to use the Pyrex for this because um, I'm going to do this, bring my bucket over closer, because it's um, easily done in a, in a water bath or the double boiler method. So what I will have is a pot on the stove. You can also do this in a crock pot um, and get a pot of water boiling that could easily hold your Pyrex. And I also like using a Pyrex because for this I'm going to use a stick blender to blend it all up with. I get asked a lot, can you use a regular blender? That to me would be kind of a nightmare because to clean up. It's just a big mess to clean up. Anything with zinc oxide in it, um, with zinc oxide, I'm not sure what, it's very pasty. So getting that jammed into those blades in a um, regular blender would just be a mess to clean up. It's, it can be done. You would just have to um, wipe everything out when it's really hot, which is how I recommend cleaning up anything that you're doing with lotion. Um, wipe it all out while it's really hot. You don't want to um, try to clean up after everything's hardened onto your equipment. So now we have um, shea butter and we have the beeswax. Lastly, we're going to do coconut oil. Zero that out again. Whoops. I hope it's not too heavy for the scale. Try it again. Oh, it's too heavy. Okay, no problem. I have another scale. I like the one I have because it's so exact. It's very, very precise. It's one of those... Um, Food, what do they call it? It's like a food metrics scale. I think they used it for Weight Watchers and I got it at a yard sale. Um, normally they're really expensive. So, but it gets down to the 0 .00 whatever of ounces. Okay, this one takes a lot more weight. And I got coconut oil coming over. Any kind of co coconut oil, as long as it's a 76 degree melting point coconut oil because there's something called fractionated coconut oil which is all liquid and you want this one to be the solid kind of coconut oil but the kind you buy for use in your kitchen is totally fine you might have a little bit of a coconut scent if you like that or you buy a refined coconut oil if you don't want the scent and there we go okay this is gonna go this needs to melt so um, I don't personally use the microwave for melting. Um, I, I, I have done that in the past, and you can do that. But I just, I just don't like the safety issue of um, if it gets too hot. That You have to be careful with beeswax, and if beeswax gets too hot, it could actually... Um, it has a flash point of, I don't exactly know what, but it's flammable, so you have to be careful with that. But I'm going to go ahead and put this in a double boiler, and I'll show you a photo of that in a second and show you what it looks like when it's melting. Okay, this is what a double boiler system looks like. Just as long as you don't get any water inside your um, your lotion. So, I'm going to put this on low. Oopsie. I'm not, I'm not. Anyway, let that completely melt. Okay, now this is fully melted, and I like I like having a lot of these um, wooden skewers on hand to stir, but I'm going to be using the stick blender here in a second. And 
Um, I'm using, I'm going to recycle this old deodorant tube that my husband had. So I, re I removed the rest of it. It's empty now. And I'm going to try that one out to use. And then I have a whole bunch of these. I, I had bought these in bulk, these little deodorant tubes. They're, they're mini. They're really small, but they, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put a whole bunch in those too. So I have plenty. All right, we're going to add our zinc oxide now to this and use a stick blender to blend it all up. It kind of bubbles, by the way. Don't let that scare you. Though it bubbles a little bit when you first add zinc oxide to your mix. Remember, you can make um, diaper rash cream using pretty much the same ingredients. I have that recipe in my uh, My Buttered Life Baby Edition. So it's just amazing what you can do with a few ingredients. And this works just as well, and it's a lot safer than what you buy at stores. There are not a lot of preservatives. This does not have preservatives in it because it doesn't have any water. And because the shelf life of each ingredient is one to two years. So you might have a little bit of ingredient separation over time, but really, I mean, you might, I can't even say that I really have that unless there's a lot of temperature change. I guess because this is a sunblock, there could be, you know, you could be carrying it from hot temperatures to cold temperatures. So you might see a little bit of change in, um, in the structure of your, of your sunblock stick, but not a whole lot. And just keep it out of really, really hot environment. I mean, it'd have to be like at least, you know, in a hot, hot car out in direct, in the direct sun for it to melt. I mean, it's going to be really hot for it to melt. Okay. One thing I recommend is that you wash, not wash, but you, you immediately clean your stick blender while it's still hot because otherwise it's a mess to clean up. It is really a mess to clean up. Trust me on this one. Probably should unplug it. I'm just going to be extremely careful not to turn on the button when I do this. And then you could still, after as much of that residue is off, then you could still wash that in hot, hot soapy water. If you are kind of not sure if you're going to be doing a lot of skin care, so you didn't, you don't want to go out and invest in um, equipment just for skin care, you just want to kind of try it on your own kitchen equipment, that's fine. I mean, you just, if you wash all of your equipment really well, you could still use it for um, your kitchen use as well. But if you start getting into it and you think, oh no, I, I'm going to love doing this, then you might want to um, just just buy your equipment specifically for your skincare products. I better make sure you can see that. Hang on. I'm not sure how, oh yeah, you'll, you'll see it. How brave I am to pour this in so I also have a medicine dropper or if you have a turkey baster, that would work. And um, we're going to try this out. Just do a little bit because... I don't know if it's just going to go straight. It's pretty hot still, and I'm afraid my little fear is that it's going to go straight through the bottom. I've had that happen before. This looks like it's going to be okay. So basically, when something like this is super hot, it might just go drip all the way through the container onto your table. And um, in this case, it looks like I'm going to be okay. If that happens, you might just need to let it cool, stir it up again. I have so much of this. Oh boy. I might be giving a lot of this stuff away. <laughs> My kids can have their own for the beach. We're heading to Santa Cruz this weekend and I wanted to make sure we were well covered. Whoa, okay. For the smaller sticks, I think I'm going to use my little medicine dropper. So you basically you get the idea you're going to let this cool completely. Okay, one other thing you can do because this is going to be as hard as a lotion bar 
is you can still put this in your um, in some kind of a mold. I think I'm going to grab a mold and do that. Yeah. Make sure you can feel the zinc oxide as if, if it hasn't completely dissolved into your mixture. Make sure you mix that in really well or it's going to defeat the purpose of having a natural sunscreen. What I'm doing is just taking a little bit out of this, mixing it up, make sure I get all that zinc oxide into my um, stick here. All of these ingredients can be purchased at places like Mountain Rose Herbs or From Nature with Love. If you are going to make um, about half of what I have here, there's enough in a hard lotion um, kit that I sell, a DIY kit that I sell on my website, hardlotion.com. All you would need to do is buy one kit and buy one zinc oxide add-on. That's on my website and you'll have enough to make half of what this is. This is a lot. I don't even, I wish I would have actually halved the recipe on this. So we have a lot. It also, though, it lasts, I even pulled out, I have another recipe and you might find the video on my YouTube channel for a sunscreen and a pump. Um, I pulled mine out from last year that I made and it's still great. It works fine. It still pumps out. It didn't get clogged. I was afraid that it would potentially clog up and it didn't. Looking at one of my trays here. Which one I shall use? Oh, I'm going to put them in a bar because then I can stick them in our tins and have them for the car. Also, takes care of rash. So if you have a rash and um, any kind of rash really and you apply this to it, you can use it for a rash too, so it's kind of multi-purpose. Oh, I still have extra. Oh, so much, so much. Anybody coming to visit me, just ask me if I still have some, and I will gladly supply you with more bars to take home. I have an old, no, it's too old. One more thing I'm going to use. I'm going to finish this off. I'm going to find another container. I don't want to have this last too long um, but you get the idea you're gonna let this completely set and um, when it's totally set then you could pop it out there's my trays right there you can then pop it out if you're having a hard time popping it out then wait to I would say from from this moment of being hot until um, it's completely set I would just wait a full probably four hours and then stick the tray in this case, this tray here, in the freezer for about 30 minutes or longer, doesn't matter how long. That way it'll pop out easily. So then you'll be, you'll have your lotion ready to go. At this time, what I would be doing is as soon as my container is empty, after I've poured that out into something, then I would immediately take a paper towel and wipe all of that residue out. And that's very important because it's just, like I said before, a mess to clean up otherwise. So I'd wipe that all out and then I would wash it in hot soapy water and that's it. So if this is your own kitchen equipment, you could still use it for food. But um, if you love doing this, you might just want to consider investing in just Pyrex or stick blenders or containers that you use just for your skincare so you don't cross contaminate. Um, but there you go. If you have any questions at all, you can email me, renateehardlotion.com. You can also leave a comment in the YouTube here and go check us out on Facebook.